Hey guys, this will be a short video series around how to use the Popo Meta tool to extract lap time and become a faster driver because that's what the software is about. I do agree though that when you're that driver looking, looking for more lap time, then it might not be easy to find out what you're actually looking for and therefore it might be difficult to really see what is your error in that and what you need to change. So this small series shall be dedicated to looking at the different things we can compare right now and trying to extract information from that and always take an advice with us what there actually is to change for whatever we're seeing. So I'll make you get rid of my face and let's focus on something more important and beautiful, I guess, which is data. So, um, there was someone on uh, the Discord actually who, who came up with a couple of questions on, on how to actually read this data and where to extract the time, um, which inspired pretty much doing this video. So, um, because my lab on Kelami was a bit old, so what I did here is to just take the setup he's been using, uh, which he got the, the Wiesma setup from the platform in the data pack, and I just did uh, my lab quickly with it to yeah just just have something very solid in there so we know we're comparing the same thing because that's the important stuff right don't compare lab that's 23 c with 17 c because it's just changing what we're going to look at so this is all driven in 23 degrees uh in the hot level in a qualifying trim so very low fuel and in 23 degrees air so this is what we're going to compare um of course the m4 and on Kailami. And um, yeah, he, he's been asking what there actually is. And in the series, I'll just make it about one input at a time. I don't want to make the video about everything at once because I think that it gets confusing. So what we're going to look at first is going to be only the break and trying to take information from that. Uh, as a start, we're seeing the whole lab. There's time losses everywhere. There's no particular place where there's a huge amount of time loss, maybe here in the middle summer, that might be the biggest individual time loss there or so. But other than that, there's every corner, there's some kind of time loss. So yeah, I I'm guessing we'll, we'll see some sort of pattern sooner or later. So let's zoom in a bit on the first section, which is turn one to turn four. So you can see on the track map, the dot is following us here. So let's zoom in a little bit on turn one. And what I also did is my line, uh, the, the black data, like the dotted line here. So everything he does is in color down here. And then you see my line is also the more transparent one here. Um, and yeah, you can already see there that I'm more outside, but I think we want to start somewhere else, which is the brake pedal, which I've been <laughs> saying earlier. Um, and we probably want to zoom in a little more even on turn one here, maybe like this. Let's keep the map focused on turn one too, so it doesn't jump perfectly just yet. And what we can see on the brake here is that I do indeed start the braking a tiny bit earlier, right? So when this is roughly 90 meters, so I would guess this is something five meters or so, just a, just a rough number there. So my, my brake line goes up, we're reaching the 100% at the time amount of time. Um, I'm going off the throttle as I go into the brake. Well, it takes a little longer for him. If you, if you follow the red dot and the green dot here, you can see he's going into the brake before he releases the throttle, but we're probably talking a hundredth max here or two. Or so. so this is not going to be too impactful. So what are we seeing is he is later on the brake. And this results then in him being faster throughout the entirety of the braking zone too, as we can see here in the speed trace. So initially it's like a three and a half, four kilometer gap, but we can also see it does get bigger throughout the braking zone. And here towards the end of it, he's carrying like seven kilometers more. And I think now it really starts to impact what the car can still do at that speed and how it can go for the corner. And what we can tell now looking at the line is that there's, I guess he notices that he's carrying a bit too much speed. So he's starting to turn in here. And what this means, he's doing a diagonal line. The diagonal line is always a tiny bit longer than going the straight line uh, up to a point, which means he is artificially extending his braking um, zone because he was essentially too late. 
in the beginning. And because he has that extra speed, now he also has to break a tiny bit later because eventually a corner can only be done at any given speed, pretty much. There's always a bit of leeway, but more or less speeds should be similar, end of the day. So what does this mean? He breaks a bit later, carries more speed into the corner, turns in a bit earlier in a response to that to extend his braking zone. Now the issue is when you turn in a bit earlier and you come somewhere to the same point here, his car just hasn't rotated as much as my car has, which is coming from the outside line, which now results in him having to do a lot of rotation or at least more rotation than I had to do for the remainder of the corner. And this means he also has to wait a little longer until the car has done the rotation, until he can really pick up the throttle again. So the main thing we're seeing, seeing what I like here is there is this trail braking attempt, looks very similar, um, might be overall a bit less than what I'm doing. But the main takeaway here is he's just braking that tiny bit later, has that tiny bit extra speed, then tries to cope with it by extending the braking zone driving a diagonal line and now his line into the corner is just compromised and everything afterwards just can't look the same anymore it's impossible correct at this point in time so what he needs to do here as a as a first measure is yeah just become a tiny bit easier on where he chooses the breaking point. And that will give him lots more option into the corner and will give him the confidence to stay straight during the braking zone for a tiny bit longer. And this then will allow him to place the car more or be more in charge of where he places the car. And this in turn will allow him to really focus on getting the power down early. This is really what early means, right? Getting the car rotated in a nice way so that the X's exit opens itself up towards you and you feel the confidence to actually go into the throttle because you also see on top here where he loses the time of course when he breaks later he's going to gain some time on entry but then it takes a lot of time for the car to rotate until he can pick up the throttle so he loses a lot of time on the exit where i've already built the speed so if we zoom out here a bit this goes on pretty much until turn four where he still keeps losing that time up until the next breaking point. As I said, only focusing on the brakes here because there's a tiny bit more stuff happening in between, but let's, again, one thing at a time. So again, in here, turn four, let's zoom in here on the map as well. And you can already see like, if we go like this, the lines, they're indistinguishable more or less right there's probably something in the amount of imports and colors or so but where we place the car seems very very similar to me so again, this is not the area of focus and this was also where we're not going to extract a lot of information here so again we're just looking at the break and i think it kind of sticks out to you let's zoom in a tiny bit more maybe even um to look for the differences here. Of course, because axle of turn one wasn't as great, he keeps losing some speed here and come the breaking point, there's still a speed difference between the two of us, but that's not the issue, right? You just have to adapt moving forward here. But I guess the main issue now is that the car is already rotating here, right? We always have this corner arch going on here. So um, we're already requesting some grip from the front tire to rotate the car. And the next thing he does is here just slam the brakes quite harshly. And that would just use more grip of the tire than there is actually available. And that's the main issue here. He's going to lose a lot of speed. And then once he comes off the brake, the front tires, after initially being overloaded, the car's probably going into some sort of understeer. Then he goes off the brake, the front tires suddenly grip up and the car's going to veer into the corner with the rear end potentially even getting loose, which then again requires him to deal with that one way or another and the more laps he did the more practice he did he is going to find his ways around that one way or another some people use the throttle to stabilize the car some people just turn way too much and i can already give it away here he's using the turn way too much option to um yeah stop the rear from stepping out of him because of the the sudden change of grip levels here he's he's causing from going way above over the front axle so Again, because we only are always trying to 
um, help hold myself back here a little bit um, from from analyzing too much and really only focusing on the brake. So the main issue is he's overdriving the front here for a short amount of time by being way too harsh in the brake. And you can see I get away with a maximum brake input of roughly 70. And I'm really trying to adapt what the car is doing here because it's pitching forward, the front is building grip, the rear is losing grip, the car starts to rotate. And I really have to adapt on the brake what the what i allow the rear end really to do and if i want to put that lever almost under the rear axle and get the rear to lose the grip and we don't want that we always want to keep the car somewhat stable and this is what you see me do here going in and out of the brake keeping the car just on the verge of losing grip while what he does is initially he's a bit hesitant here then slams it overdrives the front, car goes into understeer, then goes off the brake, rear end is likely to step out in this case because of the sudden grip the front axle gets back as he moves out of the brake really quickly and where the front tires are pointing, the front is suddenly gonna go. So this makes the corner probably quite a horrible experience for him. Um, so what to do? then uh, in the aftermath the next time he's going for this is going to be focusing on respecting the limit of the grip the front tire can produce so when you're already turning on the steering wheel you can pretty much never go to 100 percent braking because then you're exceeding the grip limit so if you say use 20 percent of what the car can do laterally that means driving a corner there's only so much grip available in terms of braking say 80% in, in that example, right? Let's say he was using a 40% of grip here for rotating, then 60% of braking would have been enough idealizing my own input here a tiny bit, right? Never take it for um, the actual and final truth. But what I wanna highlight is there's only so much grip available, try to stay within that limit and you'll have a more consistent experience through that corner. So what you want to do next time then is try to dial back on the brake. Only brake so much as the car can take without the understeer starting, without the ABS kicking in aggressively, which I think is what we can see down here as well, right? The ABS does kick in for me, but you can see it goes on, off, on, off, on, off. Whereas for him, the red bar pretty much stays on the entire time he's slamming the brake, indicating there's just not that amount of grip available. That costs a lot of speed into the corner. Now he's probably too slow for that corner and has to keep the car on the track, exceeds the, the front grip with a lot of steering um, and everything afterwards is just a mess. So if we get the braking right, everything afterwards is going to change. So we're also not looking at potential issues or errors that could have been made afterwards because they're going to change itself once the braking is more in line with the grip limits of the car. Moving on to turn five, six. So the very long right-hander here and the left-hander and pretty much 90, 100 degrees afterwards. And now I think we're starting to see somewhat of a pattern. If we zoom in here a bit again, um, my line again, highlighting, I have the more transparent one on the outside there. And you can see here, there's basically almost no brake input for me. Very, very low where he slams the brake quite aggressively and also turns in a bit earlier. And these things also, again, kind of happen um, in, yeah, in connection to one another. Because if you slam the brake that aggressively while turning in, then the car is in a very, very sensitive state and the rear is going to step out and you're going to slide through the hole of the corner or even spin and end up in the sand or whatever. So what he does to work around, because he's not ready to change that brake input, he's changed his line into the corner, kind of straightening it up here. So he has a very short straight braking zone here where he doesn't need to use the steering wheel. And that's his workaround for dealing with this way to harsh brake input. And into the corner, he is also losing 15 kilometers. Yeah, something around that. And that speed, he's just never going to get back in that corner. Whereas... What you want to do in that corner is actually be very, very gentle with a brake. The maximum I use here is like 20%. Um, and I think the, the notion that you want to have through this corner here is a lot that speed equals the radius you can drive through a corner. The slower your speed, the tighter the line you can drive. The higher the speed, the wider the line you're going to drive. And what I'm doing through this corner is initially 
I can carry more speed. I don't want to be on the inside too early. So I keep reducing the speed throughout the whole of the, uh, the corner. And I want to be the slowest when I only when I really want to be on the very inside. Additionally, what I do here on the break means I'm pitching the car just slightly forward, just creating a tiny bit of extra grip on the front axle with a little brake input there. And this will automatically force the rear around and you really have to be gentle else the rear will lose its grip. Um, and the other thing is, if you're too harsh, you're gonna drive through this corner quite edgy, right? You hit the brake, the car goes to the inside, then you feel you're too much to the inside, you make a correction on throttle, open the steering wheel or whatever. Um, so the key here is ve being very, very gently uh, very, very gentle and really um, observe how the car responds to already very tiny inputs. And I think this is this is a very perfectly normal thing here, right? And he's one and a half seconds off or 1.68 or whatever. And it's not a huge amount of time, but there's a very big error in it, which uh, means the game is kind of tolerant to those kind of things, right? If it was another game, maybe this would cost you a lot more time. Um, and being one and a half seconds of the very the, the fastest guys on the game is also not a bad thing. It probably puts you grid two or three, give, uh, depending how dense the series is. But there's so much time to gain here just by being a lot more gentle and um, allowing the car to really work uh, instead of just kind of giving up on, on how the cars work and just slamming the brake there and then having the speed down to an area where you again feel... Uh, confident with a car and this is just a speed gap he's never going to get back so the time loss keeps on going from three something tens to almost six for yeah pretty precisely six tens for the next braking zone so the key here what he wants to do is at first maybe try to live with a 30 40 percent brake input and then roll into the corner and then you will notice okay maybe i can live with even less the car still does this and in the final version maybe you have a five to ten ten percent brake input through the entirety of the corner instead of having this very harsh initial single input here that he needs to drive around to not lose the car then moving on to well well six pretty much, uh, which is what we already have visible here. Now, one of those corners where line differences aren't as pronounced, just turning my line on and off to give you a bit of an idea. Um, I go a bit wider there, then I think I actually screwed this one up. So let's see what we can make of it. Uh, let's go a bit closer even here in the data, bring this to our attention. Um, and first, First, what we can see is the whole pattern of the brake. It looks very similar. So this is good. Um, he's going into the brake the same speed, pretty much tiny bit faster, keeps the same amount of full braking before starting the trail braking. Then he keeps this little nose here at the end of the braking arch. So all this looks very similar to, to my data. The only thing is that yeah, he pretty much needs to move it forward a little deeper into the corner. The other thing, which is probably the bigger issue here, because he has this harsh braking pattern in the long right hander before, I'm fairly sure he's exiting the corner before at different speeds every lap. So sometimes coming to the braking point here, he's going to have 200. Sometimes he's going to do 195. And sometimes when he screws up the corner before even more, it's just going to be 190 kilometers an hour, which means the braking point for the next corner is going to be a different one. And this makes it extremely difficult when you have one error somewhere in your line that affects your top speed for the next breaking point, that one error automatically leads to the other because you have no clue where or how to adjust your breaking point. So what he does right here though is, I think he has the correct marker where he hits the brakes. This difference here is, I mean, this here is 50 meters. So this there is maybe one meter difference. So this is fairly tiny, pretty much where the tomrek gets black again. You need to keep this breaking point, but what you need to work on is the exit speed of the corner before. And other than that, I wouldn't really change much in this braking zone. I think his issue more here is that he sticks to his breaking point while being a couple of kilometers faster as he comes to that point. And that leads then to carrying way a little speed into the corner. And now he has to 
really wait and coast the car through the corner. Um, and this is still somewhat of an aftermath of the corner before. I wouldn't... So the recommendation here is actually don't change anything in that corner because that more or less looks fine. But getting more consistency in the corner before will also lead to this breaking point here being um, more often being the correct one. But for this corner, really, don't change a thing. I guess that's the takeaway here, which is really good. If you have one corner that you can nail, if the corner before is correct, then you're in a really good spot. Uh, seven and eight, which should be the S here, which is one of the more tricky corners on the circuit and the game. And we can see there's also a huge amount of time loss happening. So from the entry here, seven tens down easily, I guess up until the next breaking point, it's gonna hit a second. So three tenths up that hill through the S's. Why? Again, just focusing on the break, nothing else. Um, initially looks good. So pretty much same break input here. Of course, tiny differences were always gonna be there in the data, but the approach is good. Not just slamming the brake to 100% like you did a couple corners before. Um, and instead being a bit more cautious, the steering input is similar here too. So he respects that, right? He uses a bit of the tire already for turning the car. So he knows, okay, if I'm too harsh on the brake, this is just not gonna work. So he's gentle here. And I'd say the initial entry into the corner all looks fine, but where we are suddenly set apart is um, is that I use a second brake input somewhere here into the corner to force the car to stay on a tighter line over the curb, maybe touching the curb. You can there are several lines in the BMW. Sometimes you can use a lot of curb, sometimes just a tiny bit, sometimes work around the curb entirely. But the idea is always, and that's more of a line thing in that corner. And uh, now you can see my line being on the right here. Uh, let me do the toggle one more time so you can see it. So my line on and off where it really goes. Use a tiny bit more curb even, but the importance is where I want to have the car for the next corner, the right-hander. And this is why I use this additional second brake input because what I said earlier um, is gonna make all the difference here. The slower the car gets, the tighter of a line you can drive. And what I wanna do through the left-hander is I just wanna keep that line a little tighter, just ever so small. It's really, really a tiny in, uh, input here. This is maybe for not even half a second. It's probably just a couple tenths where I go with a brake to about 20% or so, just taking a tiny bit of speed out of the car, which means I can do this tighter line and in the end, this means I'm opening up that right-hander. Because you can see, if we just look at the delta up here from entry through the left-hander up until the right-hander, there's zero time gain for me. He's even gaining back because he's carrying more speed. But what this means is having a higher speed, it's necessarily going to put you on a wider line. And now his line is very compromised into the right-hander. And now I'm making all this work that I invested count being 15, 15 kilometers up on the exit of the corner and I'm going to carry this advantage all the way up the hill and this is where I gain the lap time. So the difference here is a speed, keeping a tiny bit of a slower speed through the left-hander to open up the right-hander, which is the more important corner, by just using a second tiny brake input here in, in this case. Why can we not see it? It's even happening before the corner, right? This is where the change is happening, right? Here's the initial braking, then there's a bit of rolling. And I just noticed, okay, I'm not going as tight as I want the car to be. I'm not as tight as I want the car to end up after this corner. So here's that second brake input happening in this area to keep the car eventually on a wider, uh, sorry, on a tighter line to open up the right-hander. So again, everything is starting on the brake. This is the most important thing you have in sim racing available. Everything afterwards, I'm sure he's able to deal with once he know what he needs to do. Then coming up to the hairpin um, and maybe starting with how much he's down, pretty much one second and end of straight, we're looking 1.1, maybe 1.2 seconds if it goes on. So not a huge amount of time loss here and you can still already see the pattern he is gaining time into the corner losing time out of the corner so what we're going to see is i guess you guessed it <laughs> um he is again breaking a tiny bit later which partly makes sense because no it does not i'm carrying more speed 
Uh, well, that does make sense. I'm carrying more speed, so I'm braking a tiny bit earlier, but still my brake throughout the whole of the braking zone is going to be lower. And here there's a point again where it's almost seven kilometers of a difference and he's just gonna have trouble getting rid of that speed. So he needs to stay harsher on the brake for longer, deeper into the corner, and he's probably just overshooting it. And now he just has to keep slowing down the car for a lot longer to get the car rotated. And we're probably gonna see this here in the line as well. Again, my line, the more transparent one. I'm staying on the outside for longer, keeping the car wider before actually committing to the corner. You can see this here. Just being a bit a little wider there. You can also already see this here. Maybe this is also a takeaway here. Well, I know I wanted to speak about the brake, but the line is also always important. Just bring the car over to the right side so you can really brake in a straight line and the curb on the outside can't surprise you with anything. Just make sure you're braking parallel to the outside curb or even on the curb. Um, and straightening up the car here before you actually hit the brake is going to be crucial. And this is something he doesn't do. He still gravitates towards the outside as he approaches the braking zone. And this is going to make him add some extra margin towards the outside curve, just to be sure to not hit the sandbox there because his eyes from here on, the eyes are focusing on the corner and you just don't have a second pair of eyes to focus on the curb. So I'm working away with that by just straightening up the car earlier. And now I know this curb can't hurt me. So I'm completely fine focusing on the apex. The other thing then is because I'm not carrying so much speed, I think he does the same thing as he did in turn one. He notices he is a bit too quick. So he starts turning and extending the braking zone artificially by driving the slightly longer diagonal line towards the corner. But again, it means the car hasn't rotated here in the entry phase. And this means he has to do a lot of rotating somewhere later. Um, and yeah, just has to force the car around here somewhere. But again, it's here, it's really just break a tiny bit earlier, place the car a tiny bit wider, stay outside for longer. These are the things um, he should take on board here for that corner. Breaking point seems to be a tiny bit late. If we zoom really in, let's give a proper number. Yeah, I think we're looking at something like five meters of a difference here. But I know this breaking point is really difficult. You're trying to look for where the curb starts and when you see it, it's actually too late. So you have to assume when it's going to appear and actually break earlier. Um, I do get the difficulty of that. But here, five meters at that speed is going to be, what are we doing, 200? That's easy. Then we have 56 meters a second. Five meters is going to be a little less than a tenth earlier breaking here. Okay. Um, then the exit, I guess this is not really the issue. Um, there are both ways are really possible here, keeping a tighter line, if you can, going the wider line. Both are eventually going to equal out one way or another. So don't be... Um, don't be puzzled by too many different lines here. They all have their right to exist depending on how you enter the corner and how you drive the overall thing. I wouldn't say there's the one ideal. Okay, next corners. Um, again, starting with the, the timing chart here. And he is losing into the corner, gaining middle of the corner, losing on the exit again. Um, and if we want to look at it at a whole, from one breaking point to the next 1.16 to 1.2. So not even a tenth here, but still something. So let's try to see where the magic is happening. Uh, where are we? Here, coming from the long straight, approaching this somewhat of a hairpin. There you are. Um, and let's see what the differences might be into this one. What he does well here, and I'm always a bit lazy, uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm kind of shying away from turning too much because I feel it costs the car top end. Um, but yeah, he forces the car over to the left quite early. So he does the right thing of going parallel with the outside curb here. So I like that. Not going to tell him to do this more like I do because I'm, I'm just more lazy here. So I'm breaking more on the inside, then gravitate towards the outside. But I guess it's a more difficult approach. So what he does here, perfectly fine. Staying on the outside. The braking point looks very similar. Speed difference in the end. Uh, you can probably ignore those two kilometers for the braking. But anyway, he eventually has a slightly lower entry speed into the corner, um, which could potentially come from reaching 100% quite a little bit quicker. Could be. It's a, it's a tiny difference, but it's there. As we both start the braking, he's just quicker up to 100%. Maybe my load cell is too stiff for my legs. I'm, I need just a tiny bit longer. Maybe I actually need to change that, we'll see. Um, 
and then come the corner, he has gotten rid of, of quite a bit more speed. So the difference here is something like five kilometers. And now he notices, okay, this is going to be pretty slow. And if I just keep going, uh, if I just stay on the brake here, I'm going to have a tight line. You can already see he has a quite tight line as my more transparent line definitely is more to the outside. So he seems to be clipping the curb almost with all four wheels already. Um, so he's got a lot of speed down when he, yeah, he's overprepared for the corner. He overslowed it a bit. And now the car is easily going way more to the inside than he wants to. Um, the trail braking here definitely missing a bit. It's almost like he's completely letting go of the brake at once, which in this case, as he's carrying little too little speed, does make sense. But you're going to have the problem afterward that he's not loading up the front tires with this tiny amount of trail braking here, um, which in turn is going to mean the car is not rotating as much because the front is not maxing out the grip level. Um, the coasting here just leaves the car very, very neutral. Um, then he rolls over the curb pretty much and he keeps losing speed very deep into the corner. So when we're looking at the slowest point in the corner here where my speed chart is the lowest, we are actually here slightly before the curb. This is where I already start picking up the throttle again. So the slowest point in the corner here is before the apex important point. And if we look for him, the apex is also here, but his slowest point in the corner is slightly after, right? So there's the slow speed point for me, apex similar for us, slow speed point for him. And yeah, that just means he keeps slowing down until after the corner pretty much, whereas I keep slowing down until before, slightly before the apex. And this in turn is going to mean I'm going to carry more speed out of that corner. So in, in the end, what I would say here is um, it's difficult to say braking later because the margin is so little. Um, but in the end, he, he's able to. He's able to brake ever so slightly later, make it half a meter, make it a meter. But then the important bit throughout the corner is put your car into the corner in the way that you can keep braking until the middle of the corner. So you can keep load of the front and you can keep forcing the car around the corner, have a higher speed of rotation of the car. And then you'll be able to also pick up the throttle a tiny bit earlier. So yeah, in terms of changing on the brake, brake ever so slightly later, we're not even talking a tenth, not half a tenth. It's going to be a very tiny difference. Just move your brake marker ever so slightly forward. Um, and I'd say your double checking approach here needs to be that when you have a long coasting phase, you can probably still brake a tiny bit later. You want to have, or you want to be forced to keep trail braking the car until the very point you pick up the throttle again. <clears throat> okay, then we're coming to the famous 14 and there is not much to analyze on the brake, but let's analyze the slowing down instead. Um, turning in, not going to change anything here. What, what we can see though is he's going off throttle immediately quite quickly. Then the car has a long rolling phase here. He loses a lot of speed here in comparison to me. There's a seven kilometer difference pretty much throughout the entirety of the corner. Um, what this going off throttle quickly does though is that all the weight of the car, I mean, I'm exaggerating here, okay? But the weight of the car travels forward, the front does grip up. The differential is probably open. The ha car has huge capacity to rotate. Um, just from the engine brake, the rear is just ever so slightly having a bit less weight on that axle. Just a tiny amount, just creating a tiny amount of vulnerability in the car. Um, and this makes the car really wanting to, to go into the corner, to start rotating. Um, and at the same time that he's crossing over the center line of the steering. So he's starting to turn in as he goes off the brake. He's turning in exactly at the amount of time where the car is the most susceptible to that steering input because the differential is open because the weight travels forward. Um, and the next thing he does is, and you really need to mention this here, he turns so much on the steering wheel that he forces the front end of the car to understeer because else he'd jump over the curb on the inside there. So what I do instead is um, 
So this is 50 meters. So this is probably a 10 meter difference when I go off throttle. But the important thing is I'm not going off throttle all the way at once because this would create too many issues. It would bring the weight of the car forward. It would open the differential. It would give me the full force of the engine brake and the car just loses a lot of speed and again, becomes very aggressive into the corner. And the other thing I do is I, and this is important here, sequence of events is important. I start to turn in down here. I start to turn in before going off the throttle, which means I'm loading up the left side tires before going off the throttle. And this is going to change everything you perceive into that corner, because now the rear left tire already has some grip once you go off the throttle. But you, if you do it at the same point in time, turning in and going off the throttle, your left rear tire is never going to get any grip. So the important thing is turn in first and there's a tenth between that. It's very short amount of time, but start turning in, then go off the throttle and don't go all the way. Don't be too aggressive. Give the car some time. These are GT3 cars, one and a half tons almost with full fuel. They have weight that's traveling around and it's going to take time. So be gentle with the car. And that happens by not going off the throttle as aggressively, keeping some throttle on here um, to not lose too much speed, not have the differential as open, not have the weight as aggressively move forward and not have as much engine braking. And then we already have the last corner and I can, yeah, I wanted to do a short video. Sorry, this has gotten 35 minutes already just looking at brake input only, but you can see, I, I hope focusing on that one thing is going to give you the value. Um, braking point, he looks fine. <clears throat> but I guess we, we might see something. Let's actually try. Oh, it's good, actually. He keeps nice exit speed of the corner before. So we're very similar here as we approach the breaking point. Breaking point is also very similar. He's ever so slightly earlier, but this is going to happen to me, myself, comparing two of my laps as well. The main difference, I guess, is that here, and this pattern, right, this nose that I have in the breaking there, I keep this very deep into the corner, right? Right until almost until the apex, slightly earlier again. Um, and this is something we have seen already in the corner before, right? After the long radar up here in this corner, he already had this pattern and he needs to find a way to deploy this pattern into this corner as well. There's something on the ground here in this hairpin where there's a slight bump and you could almost drive a bit faster into this corner than the radius allows because this bump is forcing the car like a couple centimeters into the corner. Um, but braking point looks nice. The The amount of full braking he deploys is really good. Um, tiny differences in the line here. I'm keeping it a tiny bit wider, but we're talking 10, 20 centimeters here for the turn. And so it's very similar. And um, the only thing that's missing is that I trail the car more aggressively deeper into the corner here. And this trailing here, I think this, this is going to make a huge difference because once he's off the brake here, the front end is just not going to provide the grip he needs to rotate the car. And now as he's stuck in the coasting, he needs to wait a long time for the car to rotate and um, yeah, find the confidence to put the power down. Same thing as we had in the other hairpin before. If we look at where the slowest point in the corner is, for me, it's here. Again, slightly before that apex. I'm still losing speed, even though being in the throttle or eh, just about, I'd say. So this is the slowest point in the corner. This is the apex. And here, here we have the slowest point in the corner for him. So it's the same thing again, slowest point for me, apex, slowest point for him, right? And this really needs to change. The slowest point in the corner needs to be slightly before the apex and you are actually already accelerating through the apex. And then I'm carrying, I'm not gaining the entire straight, but I'm gaining from pretty much here, late entry where the trail braking starts. This is where you start gaining time, carrying more speed into the corner, forcing the front around with a bit more trail braking and then right into the throttle, zero coasting, keep the car rotating, keep building speed. And this phase here, it's really from here to here. This is where I gain all the time and then onto the straight, we're actually equal again. Okay, uh, I was hoping to make this a lot shorter than it turned out to be. I hope it provides value anyway by only 90% of the time, only looking at the braking, um, 
And I do hope this is going to give you some insight how to analyze your driving as well, which is what this whole tool is about. So check it out on popometa.io if you haven't so far. And then I'm going to continue this series next looking probably at steering, throttle, uh, maybe gear changes in a fourth. Is there anything else? I think it should be, should be a four video series. So look out for the next one and see you very soon.